In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of setting up your company's ChatGPT team license. And I'll walk you through uh, why that is a great thing to do and uh, some of the features that that is gonna enable your team to collaborate and be way more effective in their use of ChatGPT. So first off, different license types. Uh, when I speak with clients, uh, they're always telling me, oh yeah, we use ChatGPT, we use ChatGPT. And then the moment you start digging a little bit deeper, what you find is that most people are just using a free uh, personal account of ChatGPT. And whilst that's fantastic, uh, it doesn't have uh, hardly any of the great features that are useful in a business context. And so what you'll find is that your people are just using ChatGPT as kind of a a souped up version of a Google search engine. So uh, beyond the personal accounts across the top row here, down at the bottom, you've got the different versions of the corporate or organizational accounts uh, that ChatGPT uh, provides. And the one on the left is the team account. And that is the one that we're going to explore in this video today. And it's the most natural starting point for most companies uh, to, uh, to begin their journey into using ChatGPT as a corporate tool. So ChatGPT team, um, this is self-service. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through in a moment, you're gonna go to ChatGPT, you're gonna be able to set this up yourself. And so it's ideal for organizations and businesses that are of a certain size. And that size is, so for two or more users, uh, you're not gonna get a team account just for one person, but you can start from very small if you're an SMB or mid-sized business, start with a single uh, group of, of people. Um, and this can scale up, but at some point, and there's no hard and fast rule here, but you might say something like 100 employees is when you might start considering ChatGPT Enterprise. And that starts to bring in some additional security and governance tools, and that the way that billing and pricing uh, and contracts happens is much more of an enterprise uh, style sales motion. Uh, but for most organizations that are getting started on their journey with AI, the ChatGPT team account is a perfect place to start. And so why would you use this instead of just having everyone use their own personal accounts? Well, one of the first reasons is that if you are a Google Drive uh, customer, so you use Gmail and Google Docs and Sheets and so on, then you can actually personalize your employees' experience of ChatGPT team by allowing them to access that internal knowledge. So when they're asking questions, it's not only using uh, ChatGPT's uh, training knowledge and the web, but it can actually uncover that, uh, that great uh, domain expertise that you've got within your own documents. And the second reason is that you can now create and share custom GPTs within your workspace. Now, if you don't know what that means, do not worry, because I'm gonna cover that uh, in a moment. But what it means is that you can start to share some of this expertise around your organization and really help every single one of your employees on this journey. Pricing, what does it cost? Uh, so as I mentioned, it's self-service. So there's no need to get into a detailed price negotiation here. It is what it is. Uh, you can either buy on an annual contract or a monthly uh, plan, and that's either $25 uh, per seat per month or $30 per seat per month, depending on whether you're on annual uh, or monthly. So if you're just looking at dipping your toe with uh, you know, five or 10 of your employees, why not start off with the monthly, uh, very limited uh, risk and exposure for you. And then as you start rolling out more widely to the rest of the company, might be the time to move to the annual plan and save a few dollars, pounds or euros. So how do you start? Well, the person that starts creating uh, your team account uh, should ideally be the person that is going to be the owner, uh, the manager of this account moving forwards. In a smaller company, that may be the CEO uh, or the IT lead or the CFO. Um, in a large organization, it might be someone within the IT department. Um, now, the key thing is that you're going to start this uh, self-service journey from an existing ChatGPT personal account. 
Now that might be your free account. You might be paying $20 for a plus account, but it is an account that this individual has created themselves. Now, one of the nuances of uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT is you cannot change the email address on one of your accounts. Uh, I've got no idea why. Pretty much any other application I can think of, you can change your email address. But with ChatGPT, you cannot. So for your starting point, um, you either have got an existing personal account that is on your corporate email address. You just happen to set it up uh, yourself. Or maybe you've got one on a personal uh, email address like name at gmail.com. If that is the case, then do not tr start your journey to set up your team account from that. Instead, go and set up a new free ChatGPT account with your work email address, name at company.com. So set up that new free account, doesn't need to be a paid one. And then you're going to be able to go on this journey to create your team account and it will uh, uh, nicely be tied in with your company's uh, email address. So how are you going to do that? Having set up your free account or logged into your existing free or plus account uh, that uses your work email address, down on the bottom left of your screen uh, when you're in the web interface, you're going to see a view plans, maybe there's an upgrade. Uh, you're going to be able to click that link. And when you do that, you're going to be taken to this page where uh, you may be on the personal um, tab, in which case you want to click onto the business one, which I show here. And then you're going to have the opportunity to add a team workspace to your account. Uh, I'm showing pounds here, but uh, yours may be dollars or euros. You're going to click that button, add a team workspace, and it's then going to take you through that upgrade path when you're going to choose the number of licenses, you're going to choose whether you want to be monthly or annual, um, and, uh, and then you're going to go through the payment uh, process and complete your transaction. Having done that, you are now going to have your new team workspace. Well, well done and welcome uh, to the future. Uh, what this means is that now when you're in ChatGPT, up at the top right, you're going to see your avatar, your profile photo, uh, which you can see here is the ChatGPT icon. When you click on that, you're now going to see these two different workspaces. In this example, team org and then your personal account. Uh, you're actually going to name your team org, probably your company name. Uh, but that's uh, essentially what you'll see. And you'll be able to switch from one to another. Now, one of the questions that you're going to get asked during that setup is whether you want to merge the personal account that you use to, to start this process into your new team account. Now, if you just created a freebie account just to start this process, then it probably makes sense just to roll it into, uh, in, into your new team account. But if you've been using ChatGPT on that email address uh, for a long while, uh, you might have some family stuff, some financial stuff. You might have some uh, health related stuff. Uh, you probably want to keep that separate. And so it's perfectly sensible to keep them uh, separate. Just be aware that if you're on a paid uh, plus account on your personal, uh, you'll carry on paying for that in addition to you now paying for your team uh, account as well. So just bear that in mind and make your decision uh, accordingly. Now in your team workspace, you've got some different roles. Uh, so because you were the person setting this up, you are now the owner. And that's why it was important to figure out who is the person that's going to set this up. As an owner, you've got uh, all access uh, permission, uh, inviting people, creating new admins, uh, being able to change some of the settings uh, that we're going to talk about in a moment. Uh, but you can also create other admins. So you might create admins in individual departments or teams, or you might create other people in your IT team who are admins. And then the remainder of your employees will be members. Uh, and so they are able to, to chat and to invite other people into the workspace. I mentioned earlier, one of the main reasons for moving from personal accounts to a team account is that we can now start to give your people the ability to search your corporate knowledge. And uh, when they're chatting within your team workspace, they're going to see this additional uh, widget, internal knowledge. And when they click that, they're going to be able to search uh, your internal Google Drive uh, to, to find that information. Uh, now, 
whoever is the owner is going to be able to set this up. Uh, you're going to be able to see this in your settings of uh, your team workspace. You're going to be able to connect up to your Google Drive. Um, there are a number of steps there. Um, firstly, in terms of how you're going to set this up uh, as an administrator, but then also how you're going to invite each of your individual uh, employees to set it up uh, themselves. And so rather than go into the intricate detail of that here, uh, here is this uh, knowledge article uh, where they walk you through with lots of screenshots. Now, I keep mentioning Google Drive, um, Microsoft and uh, uh, OneDrive and all of that is not available yet, but I know they're working on that. So this is purely if you're a Google uh, Drive uh, customer. Next thing to consider is shared links. Uh, again, another benefit of using the team uh, account is that you can share links to individual chats around your organization. And I just want to highlight what that means. So whenever you're having a chat uh, in ChatGPT in your new team uh, environment, up at the top right, you'll see uh, an icon that says share. And when you click that share button, you're going to see this modal that pops up, share the link to the chat. And you can share this with anyone within your organization and only within your organization. So it can't be shared publicly. And when you create that link and share it, what that does is takes your existing chat and it allows another employee to create a new chat that uh, essentially forks off that initial one. So they'll be able to see all of your discussion and they can then carry on that conversation in their own private chat. So let's think about an example here. Uh, maybe a marketing director has been considering a new campaign uh, that they might want to be uh, running to launch a new product. And they've been chatting away with ChatGPT and they've started to build out a marketing uh, plan for this new campaign. Well, at this point, uh, they want to share that chat and that plan with one of their team. So here they would create that link, they would share the link. Uh, the other individual is able to see all of the conversation up until that point, so be aware of that. And they can then carry on that conversation in their own personal chat without the other individual uh, seeing uh, what they carry on. And you can do that as many times as you want, and you can fork off from different chats at different points as well. So a really good way of helping people to collaborate whilst also maintaining people's privacy around the conversations that they're having. Next up, GPTs, uh, not the most uh, helpfully named thing, uh, but essentially it refers to a, 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 a shared use case, um, a very tailored uh, set of prompts that you might want to reuse across your organization. So I've given you two examples uh, here on the left, an AI use case coach uh, that you could share to everyone in your company so that people can think through their own role and they can uh, understand, develop and prioritize use cases for their own work, or a prompt writer at GPT, uh, which is going to help those employees to, um, to write their own prompts. Now, where these GPTs really come in handy is that you've done all of the hard work in preparing them. So it really is click and go. Someone goes into the AI use case coach, they click the button that says, help me uncover use cases. And already the GPT understands what it needs to do because we have trained it. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail of creating GPTs in this video. Uh, I'll share a link to another video where I've done that. But what I encourage you to think about when you're thinking about your new team's workspace is where would a GPT be helpful to help my employees to get started quickly and get the best benefit out of this new, uh, new tool? So think about de department and role specific use cases. So for any specific department, there are policies that either you as a team have to abide by or you share with other teams that they have to abide by. So think about finance. They create an expenses policy that everyone else has to abide by. This would be a great example for a GPT that we share. Can I expense this? How much can I expense? Uh, think about the processes uh, that our team uh, follows, our standard operating procedures. These are all locked away in uh, Visio diagrams and flowcharts, and we can bring them to life in GPTs. 
Think about templates, any documents that your team uh, either have to create or they share with other people. And think about any training that you do, either onboarding people into your company or into your team or training that you provide to other teams on how to work and interact with you. Every single one of these is a great uh, example of a GPT. And so it's not uh, an overestimate to say that for each team, you should be coming up with 10, 15, 20 GPTs to uh, automate and optimize a lot of your work. Having created your GPTs, one of the great things of the team account is you can now share it either across your entire company or with specific people or groups. So imagine you've built a GPT specifically for your senior executives to handle assessing mergers and acquisitions. Okay, we don't want everyone to be able to access that GPT. We just want to share it with the senior leadership team and we can do that through this functionality. So we either do it for an individual, we can add in multiple individuals, or as you can see on the right hand side, we can share it with anyone in our workspace. Having decided who we're gonna share it with, we can then determine what those people can do with that GPT once they've got access to it. Uh, they can chat with it, and so that's what you probably want for the majority of your employees. You can find it and you can use it. But what you might have is some people you want to collaborate on the management and updating of that GPT, and there you can set them to be able to view the settings, to create copies of it, uh, to create duplications for different business units or regions or languages, for example. So that brings us to the end of our rapid fire, getting you set up on ChatGPT Teams. Uh, if you want more information on both the license types uh, so that you can see what's different and why you might consider team versus enterprise, then go to openai.com slash ChatGPT slash pricing. And if you want to understand a little bit more about the uh, terms and conditions and specifically about the, uh, the security implications and the benefits of moving to Teams over having a personal account and what that means for your company intellectual property, uh, then go to openai.com slash policies slash terms of use. With that, thank you very much. Hope it was useful. And if you've got any questions, just come to charliecowan.ai and I am very happy to help you on your journey.